Hi, I'm Paul from Visu and Paramount Performance and you join us today in the workshop where we're going to be looking at our XFR. This is our project XFR. We've already tuned the vehicle with larger uh, 200 cell catalytic converters. We've put the upper and the lower supercharger pulleys on the vehicle. Our cold air induction system has already been fitted and we're running pretty damn big power already. So I guess we would say at the moment we're probably running stage three tuning with the combination of the pulleys, the air induction system and the remap but we want to push a little bit further now the problem with these five litre cars is they do like to get quite hot it's a big engine produces a lot of heat and it's got a very large supercharger which is, of course is all metal sitting right on top of it and these vehicles when you start to tune and push them they do tend to suffer from heat soak now heat soak isn't a good thing it ruins your performance in a number of ways first of all as the engine starts to get warm and all these large metal components under the bonnet start to get warm it can heat up your air as it flows through the supercharger now the problem with superchargers you're already compressing air and the actual act of compressing generates heat so you've got a hot supercharger compressing air generating more heat and this can be a real problem for performance because the ECU measures of course all of these things it measures your air induction temperatures it measures your exhaust gas temperatures and if it starts to th see things getting a little bit too warm the ECU reacts by retarding your ignition so you've done all of this tuning to go faster and suddenly the ECU is fighting against you. So though, although you're asking for full throttle and full power by driving the vehicle, the ECU doesn't like what it sees and starts to pull the power back. So that's a real negative. So with all this work and all this effort and money that you've spent on all these upgrades, the ECU now says, no, you can't have all of your fun. Things are getting a little bit warm, so I'm going to slow you down a little bit, which of course is a negative. The other problem with heat soak is as things start to get warm, as a tuner, you start to fight against pink or detonation. Now this is even more serious. It's bad enough that the ECU is fighting you and trying to take some of your power away, but if you start to get detonation inside the engine, it can do a lot of damage. So detonation is caused basically by too much pressure inside the cylinder in too hot conditions, and the combustion inside your cylinder explodes without the use of the spark plug. So it's pre-ignition. So before the spark plug is fired, your air and fuel mixture can detonate and your power is produced too early for the piston and the engine and it actually can cause damage to your pistons. And you'll talk about people, you'll, you'll hear about people talking about pinking and detonating. Now in the old fashioned days, what you used to do is retard your distributor a little bit to stop that from happening. Now we can do that electronically, of course, as well, but the actual act of retarding your ignition again takes your power away. So once again, you're fighting your own modifications. So the answer really is we've got to cool things down and that's what we're going to do in today's video. We're going to show how you can massively reduce your supercharger temperatures, reduce your heat soak, which means as a tuner we can push for more power without the ECU interfering and without the risk of heat and detonation taking place which can in fact damage your engine. So there are quite a few ways, in fact, that you can reduce an engine temperature. One of the first things we do on these supercharged cars is reach for a larger supercharged cooler, which fits right at the front of the vehicle. Uh, our cooler is about 40% larger, holds quite a lot more coolant, and we also fit a larger, more powerful pump as well. So that means the coolant is colder that's going through the supercharger, and it makes a really, really nice impact and does help things keep a lot cooler under the bonnet. We, of course, fit our cold air induction system too. That allows more air to flow, which again can make a really, really nice impact. But as you push for more and more power, you're always going to be fighting against heat. And particularly as we've started to fit the larger superchargers, the TVS 2300s on these cars, we wanted to really pull the heat out of the engines. Um, and we looked at various different ways of doing that. Water meths is one, but water meths can be a bit temperamental that these engines have to be tuned specifically for the water meths. And if you run out of meths at any time, there's no way of easily and quickly switching to an alternate software. So we actually went for a what we call a supercharger a cooler kit. So this is fitted permanently and it means you can tune for it permanently being fitted because it's never going to run out of meths or, or other, other substances like that because it's permanently fitted and permanently working. So what does this do? Basically this is a, for want of a better word, a radiator that runs the coolant for the supercharger from in one side out of the other. So it goes, the coolant goes through the engine through the supercharger cooler at the front and then before it goes into the supercharger enters our cooler here 
comes through the cooler and out the other side and is then pumped directly into the supercharger. Now the clever bit about this on the other side is we run air conditioning gas through this block. Now the air conditioning gas runs unbelievably at minus 26 degrees and if you expose it to atmosphere it actually boils in normal room temperatures. So it's super, super cool. And what we do is run that super, super cool substance alongside the water just before it goes back into your supercharger. And what we find by doing this is we can actually chill the supercharger cool down to about four degrees. Now normally that would be running at somewhere about 54 degrees. So it's a massive, massive impact. It's a huge cooling and it means that we can increase the, the power and the torque and the tuning knowing that we're at much, much less risk of detonation taking place. So it's quite a clever bit of kit. We actually, these have been around for quite a long time on the market, but when we came to fit one to this quite large five litre engine, we found most of the ones on the market were too small and they offered some cooling, but they're just not enough impact. So we've had these ones specially made for the Jaguar and we've had them designed in such a way that they can fit right behind the front crash bar on the XF, the XJ and the F-Type so they don't impact airflow to the normal radiators, but it's about as big as you can possibly get. It's a big old heavy lump, but the cooling it delivers is absolutely fantastic. So we're gonna go on to what I would call stage three and a half tuning today. So we're not actually gonna necessarily change much in the way of the tuning and the setup of the car. Our mission today is bring those supercharger temperatures down so the ECU doesn't interfere and stops trying to retard the ignition. And then the technical guys can get involved, write new software, cranking up the fuel pressure, adding more air and more boost pressure, which the supercharger will deliver, but without the risk of pink and detonation. So these things, these supercharger coolers deliver two things. One, they stop your power being taken away by the ECU when things get warm under the bonnet, but it also means we can adjust the tuning knowing things are gonna be quite a lot cooler under the bonnet too. So stage three and a half tuning, underway today. I'm gonna to pass this over to Matt and get this fitted. So Matt's not gonna struggle with this. He's a big boy, he's been down the gym. Trust your guns, Matt. <laughs> Matt, crack on and get that feed. Let me know when you're done and we'll see what the temperature results are afterwards. So Matt's been a busy boy and I have to say he's done a very, very neat, tidy job. If you want to join me just over here, you can actually see the supercharger cooler kit tucked down here behind the crash bar. Now as I mentioned earlier, the nice thing is it doesn't impact the airflow at all. We've had these specially designed so they quite literally fill this gap. We couldn't go any bigger if we wanted to, but it takes full availability of this gap behind the crash bar, but airflow 
So the radiator and the supercharger radiator is still completely available, so it doesn't interfere with that at all. But you'll see the lovely work that Matt's done on the pipe here. This is the air conditioning pipe running at the back. That's running that super, super coolant that, that runs at about minus 26 degrees. And this is the coolant that runs up to the supercharger. So to be clear, it passes through this larger supercharger cooler at the back here. So it's come from the engine, goes into the supercharger cooler, and then is then pumped through this new supercharger chiller kit in the opposite direction as the air conditioning gas is running, so have as much contact with it as possible and take as much heat out of the coolant as possible. And then the very next thing it does after leaving this supercharger chiller kit is come back up through the engine bay into the supercharger. And it enters the supercharger here at the top and on the other bank here. Now, this liquid is gonna be running much, much cooler than on a standard vehicle, and it's gonna help keep this supercharger much colder, even when driving in really hard, hot environments, or in dyno testing, for example, where cars tend to get very hot very quickly. So, we're gonna fire up now. We're gonna bring it up to full running temperature, and the way that we're gonna do that is we're probably gonna leave it running for about 15 minutes. We're gonna to want to hear the cooling fan cut in and out at least two or three times, and at that point, you know the engine really isn't gonna get any so we'll run her on the dyno to help that process. So we're going to get her nice and hot, and then we're going to take some heat measurements in a couple of different spots to see just how much colder things are than when we were on the standard engine last time. So we've had the engine running for about 20 minutes now. It's nicely heated up. The cooling fans have cut in and out a number of times, so we know this engine isn't going to get any hotter. And to touch the top of the Y pipe here is absolutely red hot. You cannot keep your hand on there literally for more than a few seconds. But look at this. The supercharger is barely at room temperature. It's pleasantly warm, but it certainly isn't hot. And the pipes going into it almost feel icy cold. So normally, these pipes that are running up to the supercharger, you really wouldn't want to put your hand on them. They're running at a, so somewhere between 54, 57, even up to, in certain conditions, up to about 70 degrees. So although it's coolant and it's adding cooling to the supercharger, it's still very, very hot. But now, with the cooler kit on, these pipes are actually cold to the touch. I mean, the air-conditioned pipe at the back, you don't want to keep your hand on there in case it's going to get literally frozen in place. And the impact that has is the coolant pipes are nearly as cold. Certainly, very fine to touch, very cool. These pipes now run up to the supercharger, and it is this cold liquid that is now taking all of the heat out of the supercharger and keeping those temperatures right, right down. The difference with a supercharger is the coolant has now passed through our supercharger chiller kit. And you can see just how cold the supercharger is itself. And there are the two pipes that run into it, taking that super cold coolant. You can see them nice and clearly in black, much, much cooler than the rest of the engine cooling system and engine bay. And that's because the supercharger chiller kit is pumping the coolant in at about four degrees. It has a massive impact keeping this supercharger nice and cool and knowing that this is a permanent arrangement and this coolant is going to be running at this temperature all the time, it means that we know that we can now crank up your spark advance and the fuel pressure and the tuning to take advantage of the super cold supercharger, producing maximum power with no risk of pink or detonation. And that's really important as we want to continue to push the tuning. And next, we want to be fitting the new TVS 2300 supercharger to this car. And we're going to be talking way over 700 brake horsepower. And to achieve that type of power, we need this level of cooling. And it's very, very effective. Okay, so now all of that's installed, along with our stage three tuning, our upper and our lower pulleys, our air induction system, our supercharger coolant pump, our larger radiator for the supercharger, and now our supercharger chiller kit. Now we're gonna have some real fun. So we're now going to what most people refer to as stage four tuning. We're gonna fit the TVS 2300 supercharger to this car. At the moment, we're running at about 665 brake horsepower. We're going to push the 700 barrier now. We're going the other side of the 700, and the next project in the next video is going to see just how much power we can get out of this engine. Now we've got it nice and cool. Let's see what another 30% boost pressure will do. 
So I hope you found that interesting. As always, stay tuned. We've got more videos coming. If you've got any questions at all, drop us an email at info at I'll make sure those contact details are attached to this video. And if you've got any questions, you can also join the Jaguar Mod Squad, which is our dedicated tuning group on Facebook. We'd love to see you there. Come and join us. Even if you're not really into tuning or you're just starting your journey, we've got about 8,000 members on that group. We'd love to see you there. You can ask all of your Jaguar questions and our experts and technical guys are on hand too if things get a little bit technical. Love to see you there. Look after yourself. Speak to you soon.